The lore behind The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is explained to players through a tapestry called the Calamity Ganon Tapestry. But what you may not know is that the use of tapestries to tell stories is an ancient practice in Japanese culture. Can we really learn about Japanese history by playing fictional fantasy games like The Legend of Zelda? In this video, I'm going to argue that we can, and I'm going to compare the representation of the Calamity Ganon Tapestry with historical scholarship on real tapestries from Japanese history. And I'm going to pull specifically from a fantastic book by Ikimu Kamanishi called Explaining Pictures, Buddhist Propaganda and Eteki Storytelling in Japan. I'm Dr. Darren Reed, and you're watching History Through Games, The Legend of Zelda Edition. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm a historian at McGill University, and this is a series I'm starting to explore historical themes, concepts, and debates through the lens of video games, specifically video games that people might not think of as particularly historical. Now that said, I want this series to develop in collaboration with you. So please, if you have any suggestions, if you have any thoughts or ideas of video games I could play, please leave me a note in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I've already received a few comments Someone suggested doing a video on Metal Gear Solid, which I think is a fantastic idea. Someone asked for more videos on the Wolfenstein series, which is in response to the Wolfenstein 2 video I made last week. So I'll work on that as well. Someone asked for some videos on the Assassin's Creed universe, um, which I haven't played Assassin's Creed for over a decade. So I'm looking forward to doing a video on one of the Assassin's Creed games, possibly Black Flag, because that sounds really fun. Um, and this video is in response to a, a request that I talk about art history in the Zelda universe. So you can take this video as evidence that I will 100% respond to any suggestions you leave in the comments. Uh, so please leave me a comment and help me build this series into whatever you want it to be. In Breath of the Wild, players begin the game as a character with no memories and they play the first few hours of the game with no idea of who they are or what's going on. It's not until they complete the tutorial area and reach the first village that players meet a character named Impa, who is an old woman who fills the player in on who they are and what their mission in the game is. To tell this story, Impa uses a tapestry that visualizes the historical destruction of the Hyrule Kingdom and prophesizes the player's future battle with the game's enemy, Calamity Ganon. The use of this tapestry to tell the story was not just a good decision by game developers to provide exposition. It also connects the game to the historical practice called etiki, or pictorial decipherment, which goes back over a thousand years in Japanese history. Starting around the 10th century, Etiki was a practice primarily used by Buddhist monks and nuns to explain Buddhist principles. Monks and nuns would use the images on scrolls, tapestries, or temple walls to explain or even sing songs about the images on the tapestries. Unlike modern ideas of visualization, which typically hold that you should make images as clear and understandable as possible so that anyone, no matter what language they speak, will be able to understand the image. Etiki images were purposely made complex, convoluting, and vague so that their meaning could not be understood without the guidance of a trained nun or monk. That's why etiki is translated as pictorial decipherment, because the images are literally puzzles that cannot be put together without a trained etiki performer. I'll show you an example. This is a set of scrolls called the Tatayama Mandala that date to the 17th or 18th century. The scrolls tell the story of a man named Ahiyori who's searching for his father's lost falcon. The story starts at the bottom left, where Ariyori leaves Fusei Castle. He travels to the right to Iwakuraji village, where he almost catches the falcon, but is interrupted by a bear. He shoots the bear 
at Shikagi and then chases the bear and the falcon to Ashikuraji village. He continues on to Anba Hall, where he meets a picture of Anba, an ogre who rips the clothing off people as they transfer into the underworld. He then chases the falcon and the bear to Mount Oyama, where he enters a cave and discovers that the falcon and bear were actually two Buddhist divinities who tell him that he will become the founder of the Tatayama Shinko religion. Interestingly, these scrolls contain not only a religious story of the founding of the Tatayama Shinko religion, but they also formed a sort of tourism guide to the Tatayama mountains. Monks and nuns, as they told the Etoki story, would have also pointed out about a dozen or more locations around the Tatayama mountains, explaining the etymology of their names and also explaining the history of the location. Listeners of this Etoki story would have been invited to retrace the steps of Aoyoi on his bird search from the castle Fuse to Mount Oyama, and this Etoki invited people to come visit the mountains themselves. Comparing this Etoki story to the explanation of the Calamity Ganon tapestry in Breath of the Wild reveals several interesting similarities. The top section shows the Hyrule Kingdom in a period of prosperity, with the King of Hyrule surrounded by his soldiers and worshippers. The middle section shows the battle between Calamity Ganon, Princess Zelda, Link, and an army of machines. The bottom section shows the destruction of the machines, and the division of the Sheikah tribe into those loyal to Hyrule and those drawn to support Calamity Ganon. Just like the Tatayama Mandala Scrolls, the Calamity Ganon Tapestry both informs players of the story of the game and also invites players to retrace the steps, visiting each of the four corners of the tapestry, which are the divine beasts that players must rescue in order to defeat the game. And just like the Tatayama Mandala Scrolls, the Calamity Ganon Tapestry is a fairly complex image that it would be very difficult to understand the story behind it without being explained by Impa, who in this game acts like an Etoki narrator. So what do you think? Do you think that there are enough similarities between the Calamity Ganon Tapestry and the ancient practice of Etoki so that we can learn about Etoki by watching or playing The Legend of Zelda? Perhaps more interestingly, do you think we could interpret Impa's narration of the Calamity Ganon Tapestry in the same way that we could interpret Etiki narration, in the sense that uh, the meaning of an Etiki image could be very different depending on which monk or nun narrated it, which would imply that the story behind the Breath of the Wild could actually be very different if it was interpreted by a character other than Impa. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like I said at the beginning, I really want this series in the future as it develops to develop in conversation and collaboration with you. So if you have any burning questions about this video or other video games or other historical topics, let me know in the comments below and I will make a video responding to your comments as soon as I can. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.